this is a special school board meeting. Um, Janet, could you do roll call? Charles Black Lambs? Here. Reed Campbell? Here. Tom Hagland? Here. Sue Kern? Here. Ruth Nelson? Bob Nystrom? Here. I was six present. Thank you. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Is there approval for the agenda? Is there a motion? Second. We have a first from Director Haglin, a second from Director Nystrom. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Building project update. We have a change order up for the new Baxter School. Justin and Brandon, Erica and Deb, are you going to talk to us? Justin today. Yeah. Yeah. No, Justin. Good morning. Uh, Justin was unable to come. He had a funeral. Uh, he had to attend over the weekend, so he's still there. So I will attempt to fill in for him. So we'll have uh, Erica and, and Deb uh, help out on this uh, change events for New Baxter Elementary School. So with that, we'll probably just turn it, were you gonna lead and just kind of give an explanation to the board? Uh, we have, uh, so this one is uh, come up after uh, plan review from the state of Minnesota. It is over our $100,000 threshold that the oversight committee can approve, so we have to bring this one to the board. So we'll let, uh, we'll let Erica give an explanation of it and, uh, and why we're here with it. All right, uh, good morning. Um, see, the, to my understanding, um, in your packet, you have been provided uh, per our meeting last week with Project Oversight, the additional information as far as the breakdown of the contingency and all of that has been submitted to you, I, correct? I believe I saw it posted, and I just wanna make sure that you do have that per your request. Um, so you'll see, um, as Brandon explained, uh, this PR that you have in front of you um, includes ASIs one through five. And all th five of those ASIs had to do with um, plan review with the state. Some being mechanical and electrical and plumbing, others uh, pertaining to the architectural. And so um, the five ASIs that were issued, um, they were in correspondence with the plan review um, letter that we received from the state. And so we provide responses back to their questions. Um, sometimes they're just clarifications. Um, but as you can see, the dollar, the dollar figure that you have in front of you is the tally of the overall changes uh, per the request of the state. And um, I shouldn't say per the request, but meeting the regulations, the codes and the regulations that are required for uh, having this project move forward and allowing us to be um, uh, have the permit in place so that we could start construction. So um, I guess um, overall, in any project, um, there typically is that back and forth that occurs with the state. Um, we submit they we submit the documents. They provide us um, a letter. We address their questions and concerns or or uh, clarifications requested, and um, proceed back and forth. So. In the timeline process of which we were working through design and trying to stay on track overall with the overall project schedule, um, typically in any project, we coincide the bidding um, along with the plan review. Because as the project's being bidding, we also are bid, we also have the plan review um, review happening and that allows uh, not a loss of time there so we can get the bids and ob obtain those and get that portion in in place and then allow us to at the same time being having that correspondence with the state so we um, had our normal um, correspondence with them and um, what we have in front of you is uh, the changes that were necessary in order to obtain that uh, permit for that project and so um, I don't 
plan on going into detail of those because I know you do have the listing of those. And I guess I would just open it up if there are any questions specific to uh, the items that are listed or anything that you need clarified. It was my understanding that a lot of it had to do with like 75% of the firewall. The a lar correct. A large portion of the dollar value that you have in front of you had to do with a firewall. And so as part of this project, um, because of the size and the master planning that we were doing for this school, the school um, required a firewall to be put in place. And as we submitted to the state, the placement of that wasn't 100%. We were still having conversations with the state. And so that's something that we progressed into then as we worked through the plan review and worked that out and uh, came to a consensus on where that uh, firewall needed to play, be placed. And in the end, it actually, from where we were originally to where we ended, it actually is a more economical solution than what we were initially looking at. So, you know, Pros and cons, obviously there's an additional cost or, or a cost associated with this, um, but all in all, it is a more economical solution to what we were originally looking at with the state. Is this, to me, the $166,000 is significantly high. You know, I understand that there are going to be things in each building that are gonna come up with approval. But this number to me, as I, as I shared a project oversight, is, um, is really high. Is there a reason that it wasn't brought up when you had those meetings and such as to how or where this uh, firewall should be so that we didn't have to redraw it again and redo it later on? Well, um, again, based on the timeline that we were tracking and trying to keep things progressing, the schedule prog or the project progressing forward to align with the schedule, um, we were just trying to keep heading charging forward. And so while we had gone down and met with the state, um, Deb had done that, um, and we met with the person who was doing the plan review. Um, you know, the, at the time when we go down to meet with the state at that t at that point in design, design isn't a hundred percent complete, and so therefore we have to go back um, based on the information that they provide us, we do some rework, and then at that time, that's when we submit for plan review. And so while we had been having conversations, again, it just isn't 100% worked out. And that's you know part of what contingency is for. Contingency is available for design changes, um, things, unknowns, as well as during construction. Um, so that contingency is um, that funding source or that, um, that dollar amount is um, identified for these types of um, items within design versus construction. Okay. Okay. Eric, are there, <clears throat> so this is just for the new backs there, right? So are we far enough along with Harrison and Niswa that there won't be anything like this? So there have been um, both Niswa and Harrison, um, to my understanding, I don't have the dollar value in front of me for Harrison, but both of them had the same type of plan review response um, process. Both of those came in under the $100,000 threshold. And that's why we're not presenting that to the board today, but has been reviewed with project oversight. And so- um, that, that were due to the the state though and their codes? Correct, yep. The other thing though to take into consideration is Niswa and Harrison are both addition remodels and Baxter is a new building. And while Baxter being a new building, there isn't um, as much flexibility or exceptions in the code when you're building new, it is what it is. Um, now, and then Niswa and Harrison being an addition remodel, there is some areas where they had qualified for exceptions and so there was a little, little bit more leniency on the overall plan review and the requirements needed at those buildings. Not to say that they're not code compliant because they still are, it's just the type of project that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And how about for the high school? Where the, the high school right now is still in plan review with the state. Um, while we've had some back and forth with them, um, not an official letter back from them yet, but there's been some requests for some additional information as they start to formulate their letter um, for us to review and respond to. 
Okay, so we might be faced with some similar issues there. Okay. Is that, and I realize it has an impact to the schedule, but I wonder if moving forward with other ones, if we shouldn't get the plan review finalized before we put things out to bid so that we're not kind of surprised with expenditures. I, I, you know, I understand the contingency, but I like to have those more based on a change that we might want to make versus, oh, well, we forgot a, not that we forgot a firewall or, you know, if we don't know exactly where the firewall should go, at least put a budget in of something and then finalize that, but, you know, versus leaving that contingency out there for those kind of things, get it further along before we put it out. Yeah, in an ideal world, uh, that is what we would like to do. It rarely happens that way just because the timelines in the state takes about 14 weeks or so on an average to get through the plan review. Uh, we did start looking at the other projects coming up in wave two and a couple of them where we probably can get done prior to sending out the bidding. I know we were planning on bidding a few of them in December, but we could probably push some of that back to January uh, depending on uh, where we're at in the in the schedule we'll look at when the construction documents get done and get them submitted right away um, and if we think we can push it back two three weeks without any adverse effects to the numbers we'll we'll definitely do that uh, I know Baxter early childhood is one of those that will we will have that time to be able to put it up in front so um, just these wave one projects didn't didn't we didn't have that kind of time frame to do it um, we did know something was coming for a change order from plan review. It always happens. Uh, it's just that we didn't just didn't anticipate this much. I just have a dollar amount. Uh, Justin did go through it with contractors. Uh, we went through all the pricing. Uh, I believe WSN reviewed it as well. We do believe it's fair pricing. Uh, some of it has been negotiated down a little bit. Um, it's, it is just a large number to swallow. And one of the things that was shared at Project Oversight last week is the fact that had this change come up earlier, it would have been in the bid review anyway, so it probably would have been there. Um, but that being said, it would be it would be very nice to know that ahead of time rather than afterwards, um, because I, I concur with you, and that was my challenge last week, is the fact that I believe the change order items are for surprises that come up in our project that um, th that nobody knew about. You get into a wall and all of a sudden there's something that you have to change or the district decides, you know what, we need, um, now that we're doing this, we think it would be a good idea to make this change. And to me, that's where that contingency, um, it's really nice to have it to in case those kinds of things come up. And so I'd really like to be able to limit the amount of expense that we have in design changes um, afterwards rather than having them ready prior. Yeah, this takes about 16% um, of the contingency. We had just over a million dollars in there. Um, so it does take a chunk of that. Uh, I do still feel we can, we'll be okay with the contingency and the okay. dollar amount being it's a new building. Um, we really shouldn't have those surprises. Um, it's just unfortunate that we, we're sitting here asking for a change order after the fact. It's, it is a big chunk of change when it's visible, and um, like Lane says, it's, uh, you know, had it been addressed ahead of time, the bids would have been higher um, because the work would have been included in the bids. Right. I have a question. Um, I know nothing about construction, but I always thought a firewall was to stop a fire between two buildings. So what is the function of this firewall? It is exactly that. Um, yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, you can build a building of a certain size, and if it gets any bigger than that, you have to put a firewall to divide it up. And so the location of this one, um, we've located so that there can be a future gym or um, sections added for each grade level. So that's also included. So we end up um, having to max out our allowable area according to the code with this firewall. Normally, if we could have a building with no firewall, because it's a complicated little thing to add to, to a building to have in there, we would do it. But in this particular case, because of the master planning and, and everything, we needed to have it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay. Did you have anything else? 
Um, the only other thing we could probably just run right into uh, have Scott do if he didn't have any more questions on the change order. We'll just have uh, move into the next agenda item, which is uh, moving the forward with the ceiling. High school, talking a little yep, bit. Yep, at the high okay. school. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the only thing we had left to approve from uh, the last board meeting was work scope 10. Uh, we were still working through the big qualification with them. Since that time, Dow Acoustics uh, did accept the alternate for uh, the studio stage two enhanced theatrical system in their base price. They had not previously bid that. Uh, so we gave them, because they were the low bid, without option two or alternate two. We gave them the opportunity to see if they wanted to include that in, in their base bid. Uh, we reviewed it. They said they accepted it. And so that's what this recommendation letter is for. Work scope 10 to be awarded to Dow Coos 6 Inc. for $1,180,400. Uh, that, uh, incorporating that as well as the future uh, bleachers, which would be through uh, collective purchasing, that brings us to sixty-three million six hundred forty-four thousand one hundred fifteen dollars twenty-seven cents. So seven percent under the anticipated budget. Sounds good. Questions? Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Next up, um, district recognition. District recognitions. Um, did you want to talk about that? I would Sorry. love to. It's really yeah. exciting. Um, if you remember a, a meeting or so ago, I talked about that we had heard a, a little bit of uh, rumbling that um, a collaboration that had taken place to apply for a grant that it looked like we had been successful. And since that time, um, we are really happy to announce that um, earlier this summer, uh, representatives from CLC, from Essentia Health, and from ISD 181 uh, met. And I see Corey in the background because she was one of the, the writers for the district, Carla, and Corey and I met. Uh, and we worked along with Essentia and the college to submit an application to SourceWell for an innovation grant called Reducing Mental Stigma for Youth. And what we had asked for at that time was for a grant of $100,000 for one year to hire someone on a part-time basis to provide an overview of what we are offering to our youth as far as uh, mental health supports, uh, what kind of programming we have for teachers and staff within our schools, what kind of curriculum, and so on. Um, we are really happy to announce that of the innovation grants, this was the number one ranking grant, and SourceWell awarded us the entire $100,000. And so last um, Thursday, um, a, a team of us met to start implementing this grant, and we're going to be hiring a part-time person very soon because one year it's a lot to do to hire someone and also find um, the information that, or the framework that we want to embed into our classrooms to provide for our staff. And so we're very, very excited. This is gonna be happening very quickly. Uh, we just finalized with Ascension the other day that the staff member will be hired through them. And so, uh, but all three entities will be very involved in providing this service and this opportunity to our community. Uh, many people say it's a one year, what do we do then? Um, we do believe that um, as with other innovation grants that we can reapply um, for up to three years. Uh, we don't know that for positive yet, but we're hoping that we're going to really be able to see some systemic work and once again, a true cl community collaboration to address some of the needs that we have for our youth and to reduce that mental health stigma for them. So um, we're really thrilled. We're really thrilled to be partnering with the college and with Essentia and uh, to make this a reality this year. Mm -hmm. So thank you to SourceWell for uh, yes. making this available for us. It's much needed. Yep. So I'm very glad that we're able to get that. Yep. 
Very good. Thank you, Lane. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, approval of the minutes from the special school board meeting on July 15th. I so move approval <coughs> of the minutes from July 15th. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Campbell and a second from Director Blacklands. <coughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Next up, the consent calendar. So yes. moved. All right. Thank second. You. We have first from Director Hagelin, a second from Director Nystrom. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. That brings us down to new business action items. First up is the action item for um, approval of the change event number three for the new Baxter Elementary, which you just talked to us about. So moved. I'll second, second as presented. Okay. First is Director Campbell, a second from Director Nystrom. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed? <coughs> same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Next up, the approval of the revised petition and waiver agreement for Mapleton, Knollwood, and Jasperwood to increase in dollars. Marcy's going to tell us what happened there. Um, so in your packet is the revised petition and waiver agreement. So um, April 15th, the school board did approve the approximate estimate of that project and the bids did come in higher so the city did draft a revised agreement and it does increase our share 336,853 um, and director Kern did ask uh, if the city of Baxter's portion is going up and theirs is going up 348,387 so it is a um, both are taking an increase on this um, Crow Wing County theirs is going up however they did their county participation, they would like it to be a lump sum of 250,000. Um, and that is something that we will, in this agreement, we will upfront because they um, don't have it in their fiscal year until next year. So once we pay it, we pay the city, the city, if when they get it from the county, they will return it back to us. Um, beyond that, looking for your approval, there is a 5% contingency on that. So if we don't have any mysteries found, I guess, um, we should be getting a little bit less than what we have in this agreement. Are there any questions on that? And they've already started construction on the new street? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there a motion? It's a move. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Campbell, second from Director Nystrom. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> <clears throat> Next up, the approval of the acoustic ceiling work scope number 10. And Scott just talked to us about that. So. So moved. Second. Okay, we have first from Director Nystrom, a second from Director Haglin. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Next up, the approval of the 10-year long-term facilities maintenance plan. And Marcy's right here again already. Um, the LTFM plan has to be approved <coughs> annually. So in your packet is the revenue projection, which is put out by the state. And we basically put in what the pupil units will be for next year. Um, so you can see that's 7,289.22. And then all of the debt service payments are already pre-populated. They take that based on our debt schedules um, of any of the bonds that we've issued to date. 
And then also in the packet is the 10-year expenditure application. So working with buildings and grounds, we come up with what our expenses are, and then ICS sends us the um, uh, estimates based on the construction plan, and what's in there is the combined of those two items. Uh, and I did just want to note that you know, in the first couple of years, the total expenditures is 10 million, 18 million, 6 million, but the revenue is less than that, and it's because we have issued debt to pay for all those costs. So they don't match up perfectly, um, but it's because we will be paying on those bonds in the next future years. Are there any questions on that? No questions. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a first from Director Blacklands and a second from Director Campbell. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Now we're up to our informational period here, business service report. Did you have more, Marcy? Just real quick, um, normally in July, you guys would be looking at possibly increasing meal prices. Um, speaking with food service director, Alyssa, she didn't feel like that was necessary, so there's nothing this month. Um, and then also the Paul Bunyan Co-op is interested in contracting with us for IT services. So in the next month, you should be seeing a contract between um, the co-op and uh, us for those services. That's all I have. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. And next up, Superintendent Larson, did you have a right. report tonight? Yeah, very session? short one. It seems like uh, many of the items that I have we've talked about. Um, I talked a lot about the mental health stigma already, which we're very excited to be working on that grant. Um, we also... Um, have been working with the, the college on some other opportunities for some of our graduates and doing some further collaborations with the college and we're really excited to be doing that work. We're also very busy with hiring. Um, as you <coughs> saw, we hired our uh, human resources director today and uh, we are doing the work to prepare for the specialist and business specialist and building grounds director. So we're spending a great deal of time putting job descriptions together and um, uh, hiring. So at the next board meeting, hopefully we can, well, I guess it'll be two board meetings from now when we'll be addressing some of those. Also next week, um, another thing that we're working on right now is our safety and emergency manuals, getting those up to date. Um, making sure that we have those updated each year as required by our policy. Um, also, the last thing is next week is the MDA, the MASA Back to School Conference. Hard to believe we're there already, uh, but uh, Heidi Hahn and I will be out for a few days at the superintendent conference for that. Um, I know that uh, Chair Kern is going to talk a little bit about looking ahead at August and all the busy things that are going on in the next few weeks, but one thing that I don't have on there is I'd like to add, um, I know uh, Director Nystrom and Director Nelson are going to be coming to a planning meeting for Performing Arts Center. We'll have mm -hmm. some more work later, but we want to have a small group conversation about how should we lead that effort as we move forward. And so we're going to have a meeting on Wednesday, August 7th at 2.30. So that's, that's it for my report. All righty, thank you. And so this week is fair week, and then you have MDA meeting, MSBA meetings. Mm -hmm. Our next regular school board meeting, August 12th. Our new teacher breakfast, August 19th. The all staff welcome back, August 26th. And also that same day, we have our second regular school board meeting here at 6 p.m. Right. And is there a motion to adjourn? I just oh, need to you have one more? This sheet says Monday. August 26th for the breakfast, but on this sheet it says August 19th. You are right. Is the new teacher breakfast August 19th? It should be the oh. 19th, right? I oh, think it is. No, the, this, the it is the 19th? It is the 19th. Okay. Yes. Very good. This might have been from last year. Yeah, that should be oh, yeah, the 19th. Oh, yeah, it says the 18th. Yeah, 2018. No, okay. I pulled the wrong one. Okay. That's okay. No worries. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Very good.
Thank you. We have a first from Director Nystrom, a second from Director Campbell. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you.